chapter 18 is sura ya 18 and 16 verse 1 says so the lord said to aaron you and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear iniquity connected with the sanctuary and you and your sons with you shall sorry numbers 18 not leviticus i'm sorry i'm reading now 18 numbers 18 i thought was ukubala 18 so the lord said to aaron you and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear iniquity connected with the sanctuary huh? read it as it is there you and your sit down thank you so much you and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear iniquity connected with the sanctuary please note it quickly iniquity connected with the sanctuary eh? and you and your sons with you shall bear iniquity connected with your priesthood I want that to sink the iniquity connected with the sanctuary and the iniquity connected with your priesthood so there is when the iniquity is of the sanctuary when the people have corrupted the sanctuary the priest shall bear the iniquity the corruption of the sanctuary and then that is when the priests corrupt themselves the iniquity of the priesthood all another priest corrupts the priesthood and one of the priests a member of the priesthood corrupts and you bear the iniquity and how, how are you going to bear the iniquity it's when you have understood the, 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 the structure of the altar so it's very important to understand now look at uh, Leviticus chapter 21 Leviticus chapter 21 It talks about the whole, verse 21 and the Lord said to Moses speak to the priests and the sons of Aaron and said to them no one shall make himself unclean for the dead among his people Abalevi abiri mwemu abiri mwemu abiri mwemu mwemu abiri mwemu mwemu mukama nagamba musanti yogera ne bakabona batabani baloni ogamenti te wabanga omuntu eyeyo nona olwabo abafa ku bantu be no one shall make himself unclean for the dead among his people te wabanga omuntu eyeyo nona olwabo abafa ku bantu be except for his closest relatives wabula olwabaganda be abamuli okumbi his mother Nina, his father Chitawe, his son mutabani his we, daughter muwalawe, his brother muganda all we. his virgin sister verse 4 he shall not make himself unclean as a husband among his people 
on and so profane himself. They shall not make bald patches on their heads. No shave off the edges of their beards. No make any cuts on their body. They shall be holy to their God. And not profane the name of their God. For they shall offer the Lord's food offerings. The bread of their the bread of their God. Therefore they shall be holy. And they shall not marry a prostitute or a woman who has been defiled. Neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband. For the priest is holy to his God. You shall sanctify him for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you. For I, the Lord, who sanctifies you, I am holy. Verse 9. And the daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by whoring, profanes her father. Profane, the word is profanes. Not, it's like he def, she defiles her father. Not the son but the daughter. When, if she profanes herself in prostitution in fornication she profanes her father daughters have you heard what I said daughters of priests have you heard what you said my daughters are you hearing this when you profane yourself you profane your father when you defile yourself, you defile your father. You're getting me? Not your son, but of our daughters. So, that's the demand, the requirement of a priest. Because not only your responsibility in the priesthood is not only repenting for the people but also ministering to the Lord. You know, there's something I was telling in the previous session. The new wine and one of the new wine skins, the end time new wine skins I believe is people learning to minister to the Lord than ministering to the people. In the past, we have been ministering to the people. It's about the people. But in the new wine, it shall be time on the altar to minister to the Lord. And I have found it this, this time that when I minister the people on my altar I feel there is a struggle even to have more time there. But when you minister to the Lord the beauty of it, the Lord increases you, the grace on you before you, on you, upon you that you may remain there. The sin of the altar is the sin of the sanctuary is the sin of the nation. 
what you see in a nation is the scene of the altar. What you see in your community is the scene on the altar. When you see fornication, adultery, bloodshed, just know it is on the altar. When you see prostitution, it's on the altar. I was surprised when I read a scripture that there was a time in Israel they had male prostitutes in the temple. Actually, there was a booth in the temple place for male prostitutes. And I was like, wait a minute. Is it not the same we see today? The prostitutes on the altar. Have you been to some places when the people come to worship to lead worship and you are like disturbed say like are they worshippers or strippers the way people dress when, when they are coming on the altar some people, it's, you don't see the difference between them coming to the altar or going for a, to a club. Because in their minds, in their hearts, they don't know that the altar is holy and a place and a time of purity and ministering to the Lord. So I felt like in this session before we do the practicals tomorrow if we are raising the holy priesthood the, the people here should know what is a prayer altar and what does it mean to build, building a prayer altar. So let me give uh, some key principles and points about the prayer altar. Prayer altars are engaging. The prayer altar, a prayer altar requires much more commitment. I hope we can have that slide on the screen. Requires much more commitment and sacrifices. It includes set times with God in a set place but also carries over into every aspect of our lives. So, please note, set what? Set time with God in a set place. Set time with, with God in a set place. Did you get that? Yeah. A set time with God in a set place. Set time with God in a set place. But also carries over. So there is what you call a carry over. Now listen to what I'm going to say. When you spend enough time in the praise of God, even when you leave the place, there is a carryover. 
people look at you and say there is something divine on you. You know, you remember when Moses left the mountain after many days before the Lord when people looked at him they covered their faces. That he had a supernatural encounter with God but what he saw with God it printed itself on him that he carried it even from the presence of God. Oh my God. Don't excite me to preach. Don't excite me to preach. Because when you are too cold like that, I feel like charging you. Listen. What he encountered in the secret place carried over in the public place. Jesus. Do you get it? Let me pray to my pastor here. He was in the room with God. He left the room. Came to the people. He didn't tell them that he has been with God. But when they looked at him, they could see something glorious on him. And they could not look at him. Do you get it? Do you get what I'm talking about? He had an encounter with the unseen. But it carried over in the seen. And people said, something glorious. Do you know that you can have an encounter in the supernatural but it appears on your physical body? Many examples are coming to my mind. Jacob wrestles with God in the spirit. But when he woke up, he was limping. So he carried the mark of the encounter in, on his body. The encounter was in the spirit, but he carried over on his physical body. So you could look at him. Listen, do you know there are people that have interceded in the secret place and the wounds of Jesus appear on their bodies? Have you heard about what you call stigmatas? Stigmata. People who prayed and in their hands the wounds of Jesus came and on their feet they carried the wounds of Jesus because in the place of prayer their spirits encountered God but that encounter over, oh, there was an overflow into now to the physical I want to stay on the altar until there is a carry over. Until there is an overflow. Until the, I don't need to tell the people I was before God. They look at me and say your face is divine. Your eyes are glorious. Your words are fire. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? Because you know that's what the altar will do. You will look like the what you, what you met on the altar. Ogenda kufana na chewa sinka nje kuchoto. Some people have met demons enough a lot of times they've met demons and when you look at them you see the demons. They've talked about demons, preached about demons, studied about demons, taught about demons that they look like them. You know, when you find them in their prayer meetings, you are in your fair. God is my. Okay, okay. And just knocking, this brother has, has, has a PhD in demonology. Demonic science. 
Science what diamond? Master of demons. Master Masters diamond. of science in demon snake tunnel. Science mu diamond. But there are people <inaudible> who have now knowledge <inaudible> of the deep things of the presence of God. <inaudible> not, the, not the deep knowledge of Satan. People invite me in their conferences. Not because I'm a preacher. Because I love God. No, because they say he's a former satanist. Let him come and teach us about Satan. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my energy. So what do you benefit if I teach you about Satan? Are you going to marry him? What do you want to know about something evil? Hey, we need knowledge of him. For what? There is enough knowledge of the glory of God. You have, have no business, business studying the working of demons and the kingdom of darkness. Your time is to know God. They that know their God shall be mighty, shall do exploits. Not they that know the devil, but they that know God. Are you getting me? The, I, you know, I see many people who have studied a lot of about deliverance and demons. Everything around them is a demon. And evil spirit. A curse. A sensual curses. And then you ask themselves, by the time they begin studying about God, they are getting their 90s. Because the first 40 years they were studying about demons. So people call me in the conferences and they tell the people come for the conference a former devil worshipper. That's not me. The devil worshipper died. He died. He died of leukemia. He died of cancer. The devil worshiper died. The one here is the one that came from the dead and walks in the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So I walk as a son of God. Don't talk about my father. Talk about my glorious future. In fact, let me tell you, that's an embarrassment. When you, you introduce me to the people, but because of my past, that's an embarrassment. It's an insult. You are insulting me by identifying me with the devil. That is there. But I, I've been engaging with God 24 years now on the altar I don't look like the devil I look like glorious Jesus are you getting what I'm talking about I've been engaging with the, with the Lord on the altar I don't have time to pull down skeletons and study them Some of you are studying skeletons of your father's fathers, fathers, fathers. fathers, fathers. You, you dig them out. You study them. That, that time was there. But now, the Lord is calling you to the altar. Don't bring skeletons. Come to the altar and you receive the new wine and you receive the fresh fire and you receive the prayer presence of God, not the presence of demons. Am I talking to somebody? So, when you spend your life on the altar, you resemble what you spend time with. What you spend time with, you look, you look like it. You know the the psalmist said that they Abama. that worship idols are like them. 
They look like what they worship. You look like what you worship. Ah. You resemble what you worship. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You look like what you worship. <laughs> Amen. 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 In many circles, in the church, the service is not complete service without talking about that guy there. The devil. Sitani. But the altar requires commitment, sacrifices, sadaka in set times with God. Do you have a set time with God? The appointed time. So prayer altars engage us also in God's presence. That's number one. They engage us in God's presence seeking his face. Okay? Do, they engage us. Prayer altars engage us in God's presence. That's number one. In what? In what? God's presence. Seeking his face through deep times of soaking in his word. Deep hallowing his name. Deep repentance. Consecration. Deep intercession. Spiritual warfare. And declarations. Ah, I've, I've mentioned all the activities of the altar. Engage us in God's presence. Seeking his face. Through times of soaking in his word. Hallowing his name. Repentance. Consecration. Intercession. Spiritual affair. And declarations. Number one. Soaking in his word, hallowing his name, repentance, consecration, intercession, spiritual affair, declarations. Seven. So, what is a prayer altar? Number one. A place of intimate communion. It's a place God appears to us and records his name that we praise and hallow him. Appears to us and records his name that we praise and hallow him. It's a place, time, and lifestyle where we create an atmosphere where the presence of God will be drawn so that darkness is broken over our lives and the land. Nancy. Jesus. Yes. Somebody, you should not miss this. It's a place, Chifo, a time, Chisera. a lifestyle. Someone's a lifestyle. It's a what? It's a place, Chifo. 
Some other place. Gambe chifo. Is that what? Chichi. Time. Chisera. And lifestyle. Ntambu zayabulamu. Where we create an atmosphere. We tutonde rovengula. To the, where the we cross, uh, where the presence of God will be drawn. Now, when you draw the presence of God, the presence of God breaks the darkness. So you don't fight the darkness. You don't investigate the darkness. You don't search the darkness. You create the atmosphere and draw the presence of God. The presence of God drives away darkness from your life and from the land. If you are clapping, clapping for, clap for Jesus. Do you get that? I'm giving you a strategy. You don't go in darkness to know the darkness to find the captives in darkness. Because when you go in darkness, I assure you, Satan will defeat you. He's the master of darkness. So what you do, you bring the presence of God, which is the light of God. And the presence of God drives away darkness and breaks it off your life. So so you draw the presence to drive away the darkness. You can't fight the enemy in, in darkness. He's a master. So one of the purpose of the prayer altar is to create an atmosphere where the presence of God will be drawn. So as a man of the altar, you master in the presence of God. You learn the protocols, the ways of the presence of God. How to draw the presence of God. May God give teach you the skill that in any place you go you can draw the presence of God. You can draw it. Your work is to create the atmosphere. When you stand on the altar, when you come on this podium, you can create the atmosphere. Regardless of who stands here, God moves. Do you know there are places you go to it has nothing to do with you? The people in that place created the atmosphere. There are places you step and you have to deliver. You have to, you know, you have to, to, to deliver. You have to de oh. deliver. You have to deliver. You have to deliver. to deliver. demons. have to present. You have to deliver. You there are places it's not you the minister who is anointed you just found the heaven open you just found it open you know I enjoy those places when you step in someone has opened it for you I thank God for some of you some by the time I come you have done the hard work you have raised the altar and the heaven is open Let's, let me say this some of you you may think you are special no you just happen to be where God was moving <laughs> you just happen to be there whether you are good or not you just found it open People already prepared the atmosphere. I thank God for these people here. These ladies here have worked with them and they can open. 
the atmosphere they can open the room for me hallelujah, hallelujah. and I have thank people for the, in the boiler room those in the boiler room God bless you while well, I'm here they are, the altar is going on what you are seeing here whoever stands here can deliver it because of the women backstage in the boiler room because of these people who prepare the rim who prepare the atmosphere for me to ride on some of you by the time you open the rim the service is closing by the time say it's opening they say it's, it's offering time because now you come to a, in, in those places when they, it's closed I don't waste my time just greet them give them some stories and close the service when you are a preacher when you hear a preacher stories after stories and turn the service into comedy. <laughs> service in when a preacher becomes a comedian and you laugh and you enjoy just know the heaven is closed. He tried to go up and so he decides to bring fun when I, when I was in UK when I was in Karamoja when the cow chased a goat the goat ate a crocodile and they talk about that and just okay the rim is closed the man is finishing the service he's trying to, to finish his time I've been those places where I'm going to say 10 minutes to go I need to close this because it, it is closed. In closed places, they are not closed fully. It's the heaven that's closed. When the heaven closed, portals of hell open. You can stand on the pulpit when the, a portal of of hell. Not a heavenly gate open. But a tunnel of hell is open. A gate of hell. And I've listened to these ministers. You can easily lose your ministry your calling even your anointing on such places. You can lose it and it may take you years to recover it. You step there. The, the Lord rejected the altar. The Lord rejected you step the altar. there. Powers of beings have access to you. They blind you. Some people invite you on their altars to, to preach just to capture you. Especially young people who are excited on invitations. You know we have young men and young women. They are on every, they are on every pulpit. Because they, they are musicians. They are singers. They go on, on stages, on, on pulpits. And some of them are not pulpits. Are traps. Are pits. Are pit. And as you go on, on, on them, one of them traps you. There is one. There is one. Here. I said he's not stepping on this in the conference. Said, I, I, and you know some people. May, may I don't talk to them. Just cut them off in the spirit. And I said you ought to reject him. <laughs> because he's a prostitute on altars. Some places, some of you prophets of God, that's where you 